So today on The Rutledge Perspective, we're talking about service or servant leadership, which is a term we hear tossed around a ton. Everybody wants to think about being in service or being a servant leader. And to a certain extent, I think it's lost a bit of its meaning. So let's talk about that a little bit. And there are three things that I want you to, to remember from today's session. One is being in service or being a servant leader is not about you. It's about the person or the persons you're serving. The second thing is not everyone is in a position to receive service at all times. And that's not about you either. And then finally, not everyone who is serving is truly equipped to do so. And that's about them and not you. So in other words, if you're really thinking about service or being a servant leader, you've got to remember that it's really not about you. So let's dive into those, those three things. So the first one being, being in service is really about the other person. The example I have for you is a recent trip I took and I happened to fly Turkish Airlines for the very first time. And it was incredible. I highly recommend if you've never flown Turkish Airlines to, to give it a try. They have service on lock. And the reason it came up to me, and it was an example that I use in this area of service, is because of the way they thought about and executed service. So on these long international flights, you usually get a meal, especially if it's overnight. And so we got on the plane and I had actually ordered a special meal. And they initially give you your little drink when you first land and, or when you first sit down in your seat and give you warm nuts. And so all of that happened. And then they brought around the menus. And the first thing was the purser came and said, oh, wait, we gave you a menu, but you've got a special meal. So we've got a different menu for you. Okay. I didn't think anything about it. They brought me the new menu. It was just fantastic. So then the meal service started. And the first thing you got was this amazing pre presentation. And it was actually a meal by candlelight on uh, Turkish Airlines. It was really kind of cool. And I'll try to remember to post pictures. And then as the courses went along, we got to my final course. And by then, the other courses had been pretty substantial. So I really wasn't very hungry. And they brought out the final course to me. And I ate some of it, but I kind of picked around at it. When the purser came back to pick up my meal, he did so and he kind of looked at it and frowned a little bit and took it back. The next thing I knew is the chef came out and said, I am so sorry that you did not enjoy your meal. We can absolutely prepare something else for you if, if that would be okay with you. And I kind of sat stunned in silence for a minute because it hadn't even dawned on me that they would actually be paying attention to what I ate and how much I ate, nor that they would care if that was the case, nor would they actually try to remedy the situation. But from their perspective, their service was not about them. Their service was about me. And they saw she hadn't eaten her meal. She must not have really liked it. What can we do to fix that? It was an absolutely incredible experience. Now, I didn't ask for anything else. I was perfectly satiated. But the point was they got it. They got what service meant. And the entire flight was that way. The entire experience with Turkish Airlines, everything they did, everything they said reflected their concern about ensuring every passenger on that plane had a great experience. So when you think about being in service and being a servant leader, what are you doing to alleviate the pain point of the other person? How are you thinking about them first and not you? Now let's move on to the second part of servant leadership, which is remembering that not everyone is in a position to receive service at any point in time. And the example I give here is one that probably we have all experienced. Something we've bought isn't working, it goes wrong, your lights go out, your electricity goes off, or your computer isn't working. And because of the way things happen today, what you get to do is call the customer service number. And we all love that because then we get in that automated, here our menu no ha numbers have changed, please listen to the whole menu before you select an option, all of that craziness, which already starts to kind of set our teeth on edge a little bit, but we're trying to be patient. But as you get to that first person who couldn't help you or asks another question or the second person who says, can you give me your account number again? Or the third person who says, well, I see some notes, but I don't really understand. Can you explain it to me again? Your patience is starting to wear pretty thin. Now, by the time you get to the 10th call, you probably have an understanding of about zero. And what that means is you have now reached a point where it doesn't matter what the next person says or what the next person does. You are no longer in a position emotionally or psychologically to be served because you can't even figure out what you need them to do other than to stop the pain. 
And at this point, you may not even be able to articulate what it is that's wrong. You've explained it so many times. Somebody else didn't get it. They didn't understand what you were saying. It has been a whole debacle just to get your computer to work or just to get your lights back on or just to get your cable to work. And in order for you to now be served, it is going to be a gargantuan task for the person that's on the other side of the phone. Because your mind is one that says, I've now been through this pain. I've been on the phone for 45 minutes or an hour or what have you. And I think we've all been there too. And I just want it to work. So the next person that comes on, I just need you to fix it. I just need you to fix it. So you can't even articulate what you need anymore. That level of frustration and irritation means that the person who is trying to serve you, the person who is being a servant leader, really has come to the position where they are not going to be able to serve you well. And if you are in a position where you're helping someone one-on-one, -on -one, or this is a personal relationship, or even a professional relationship, sometimes the best service you can give to someone is to pause and to be silent or to give them a break and say, let's come back to it later, or how about you let me call you back in 30 minutes and then follow up on that. Because in that moment, the ability to serve is, not, is going to be practically impossible. And again, it's not about you. It is about the person who needs to be served, the person who is in pain. Now, the last point is that not everyone who is in a service position really is capable, nor should they be, in a service position. And this ties closely into number two. So again, those calls that we make to customer service agents, the calls we make to those lines, Sometimes you get those people that you can tell as soon as they pick up the phone, this is not what they want to do. This is not where they want to be. They are just doing this because this is what they have to do for this next eight hours. And the reason we have come to that point and where customer service seems to have gone the way of the dodo is because custom companies have started thinking more about protecting the company than serving the customer. And again, I'm spreading peanut butter here. I think companies really do have the best in mind, but because we've got to gotten to be so litigious because it's so much easier for people to blame. It is on companies' best interest to say, let's just hire people who we don't have to worry about thinking are creative or trying to find creative solutions. We're gonna give them a checklist and this is what they have to follow. And if they don't follow this, then that's gonna be a problem for them. They're going to be punished or they are going to be reprimanded because they didn't follow the checklist. Well, the unintended consequence of that from a service perspective is that you have created a whole group of people who you've told don't think, don't be creative about solving the, the, uh, the customer's issue. Don't listen actively to what it is and think through your entire toolbox to see what may serve them best. That is not about the customer, that's about the company. And because customer service can be hard when you get those people who are really angry and really frustrated and are being really ugly to the customer service agents and those people who are who are creative and want to serve but are put in this little box, you wind up with people who take the job because it's a job that can be taken, not because they want to serve or they want to be in technical support or they want to be in service. And so you wind up with all of these pieces piling on that that give to the customer the sense that they don't want to serve me. This company cares nothing about me. I've spent all this money, I've spent all this time, and it is clear to me that I absolutely don't matter. Because everyone who is in a service position is not equipped to serve. And when they're not equipped to serve, that translates into how they interact with the person who needs their service. So what does all this mean in terms of servant leadership and being of service? First of all, it is really important that if you say you're going to be in service, you want to be a servant leader, that you remember it is not about you. It is about the person who is in pain, the person who has a problem that needs to be solved. It is about them and how can you bring your best gifts and your best talents and your best attitude to serve them. Second, it's remembering that not everyone is in a position to be served. Sometimes the person is in such crisis or in such frustration or in such irritation that there is absolutely nothing you can do. And so how can you respond to that person from a position of calm, a position of true desire to help and to serve in a way that helps bring the blood pressure down, that helps show compassion, that helps really bring them to a place where they can either be served or that you can get back to them at a later date and then serve them in a way to alleviate their pain. It is not about you, it's about them. And if they are not in a place where you can actually serve them, you wanna to try to meet them where they are and do the best you can. 
And then finally, not everyone is equipped to be in a service role. If you are a leader, if you are in an organization that is focused on service and you have people that you know, and I know that you know, should not be in those service positions, it is incumbent upon you as the leader to ensure that you move those things around. Either you help the person move towards skills and attitudes that help them be of good service, Either you think about how you are directing your service people, giving them more creativity, expecting different behavior and rewarding the behavior you want. Or you may have to just make a move because that person is truly not the right fit in that role. But it is incumbent upon you if you are truly in service, you want to be a servant leader, that everyone who is serving on your behalf and on behalf of the company is equipped to do so and willing to do so. So the next time you're really talking about, I want to be in service, I'm a servant leader, ask yourself those questions. Why am I doing this? What is the outcome I'm trying to get to? What is the reason that I believe that I should be in service? And if any of those answers are more reflective of what it does for you than what it does for the people you're serving, you're not quite ready to be in service yet. That doesn't mean you can't be. It just might mean you need to tweak your perspective just a little bit because being in service is not about you. It's about the person or the persons you're serving. And that's the Rutledge Perspective. Thank you so much for listening. We'll see you next time.